Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we're now joined by Michael Pijanowski, our amazing relationship coach, and so much more. Michael, welcome back today. How are you? I'm doing great, Jill. It's great to be back. Well, thank you for being here. And for those new listeners and viewers today, would you mind introducing yourself to everyone? Sure. My name is Michael Pijanowski. Um, I run Enjoy the Ride uh, Consulting in Addison, Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I work with awesome people to help them find new ways to interact with their world. Uh, so I work with people who are dealing with uh, anxiety, depression, uh, marital issues, um, people that are looking to break old habits, uh, start new habits, and people that are looking for a, for a partner that resonates with them. Uh, wow. I also do group meetings with mm-hmm. uh, like in a business setting um, to help successful people become even more effective. And the website is enjoythericetexas.com. Is that true? Enjoythericetexas.com. That is correct. And so uh, people can reach out to me if they want a free phone consultation and, you know, to see if we resonate and if we're on the same page and, and then we can go from there. Beautiful. So uh, you're based out of where exactly? Addison, Texas, which is north of Dallas. Great. But you work with people virtually like this all over the world. So anyone can give you a call, reach out to you. You can do this on Zoom over the phone. By the way, I like the wine bottles behind you. I am a wine fan. It looks like you got some reds back there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's talk a little bit today, Michael, about boundaries and the importance of boundaries and what even are boundaries. Okay. So, um, so like, to start with uh, kids. So with, you know, we have kids and, and so as we're bringing them up where we have to have boundaries with them to let them know like how far they can go and, and, you know, what we really need them to do. Uh, If we don't have boundaries or if our boundaries are soft, kids are really good at testing boundaries. They can, they can push and push, you know, like we may have a a boundary that you need to do your homework when you get home from school and you're not going to play video games until you're done with that. But if they find out that your boundary is kind of soft and like, Hey, I've pushed mom or dad, you know, before they're going to try you. And so it's important to set boundaries and it's important to, to start to teach our kids from a young age that they can have boundaries too. So when in our friendships, we have um, situations, in, in fact, this was something that came up recently. Uh, so had a friend call and say, well, you know, this other friend is, you know, needing help and she's really in a bad way. And however, I'm in a bad way too. And so what do I do to help her? It's just dragging me down. And so what I explained was, that it's not your job to help this other person because you need to be in a situation where you are really solid in yourself. So the analogy I use with her is, let's say you're swimming in the deep water and you've got a, we've got a weight around your neck and you're trying to tread water. And then this other person jumps in, they're flailing around and then they put their arms around your neck. Well, you're both going to drown. And so it's um, when you know you're in that situation and you, you really don't have anything to give to someone else, the best thing you can do for them is to tell them, listen, I I understand you're, you're in a rough place. I'm in a rough place right now too. Mm -hmm. And I I really can't, I I really don't have anything to give to, to help you. It's, it's not going to help me. It's not going to help you. And so you, you draw a boundary of, you know, this is as far as I'm going to go because, you know, it's about honoring ourselves. It's about taking care of, you know, ourselves, uh, honoring ourselves first. So when it comes to couples, um, so I'm kind of ramping up here because it gets more difficult when you get into a couple situation, especially when it's a counseling situation and there's already uh, issues because a lot of people wait until, um, until they're ready to tear each other apart before they even seek help, which is, Mm. which makes it difficult. Yeah. So uh, what I would tell people is one of the things I tell them is when, when your partner is, has some sort of behavior that's really problematic, uh, you know, I go through the whole, um, the whole scenario of how our subconscious minds are running our lives and how, 
you know, a lot of what we do is programmed at an early age and, and maybe we've had trauma and everybody's got stuff. And so your partner may have, you know, they may have some issues that, that they've been carrying around for a long, long time. And these things are bubbling up. And so I tell people to, you know, that you have to understand why they're doing what they're doing. And so the immediate pushback I get is like, you mean I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to just be okay with what they're doing. And, um, you know, this is in some cases is destructive. Yeah. And I say, well, that's, that is the misconception that most people have because they, uh, there's a difference between understanding why they're doing it and, um, and having compassion. So having compassion that you know why they're doing it, uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't have a boundary. It doesn't mean that you allow that behavior to continue. And in one case with one couple, um, you know, the woman said, well, you know, I, I told them this was not going to happen again. And this, you know, this behavior and, and he did it anyway. And so we had a little discussion about boundaries. It's like, okay, so you had a boundary, but you didn't, you didn't enforce it. And so you're, you're actually enabling this person to continue their behavior because they just knocked down your wall that you put up. Yeah. And you don't have to do it from a place of anger. It's just, listen, this, this behavior is not acceptable. Uh, I, I'm not going to tolerate it. I love you, but this is not, this is not the way I'm going to live and I'm not going to accept it. And, and there's no, there doesn't have to be anger um, brought into the discussion at that point. It's just you're just honoring yourself and letting that other person know that, you know, I understand you're going through some stuff, but this is my hard stop. You know, I have a boundary. So, yeah. So well, I, in, in, in another, in another instance is uh, we have boundaries at work as well. So I could touch on that real quickly because sure, this is please. something that I struggled with. I was the guy that, you know, Hey, get it done. Here's a project. Can you, can you do this? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, give me that. I'll do it. I'll do this. I'll do that. And and so I pretty soon I'm I've got way too much on my plate. And being the type A person that I am, I thought I was just going to do it all. And I created so much anxiety and stress within myself. And so later on I learned that it's okay to have a boundary with your boss. Okay. It's okay to say, "Okay, this is what I'm working on." And you want me to do this and I'm happy to do it, but something else is going to be left undone. And so what would you like, what would you like me to leave on the side for a little while so I can take care of this for you and just have that open, honest discussion. And so in that we're, we're reducing our own stress and we're just being open and honest. That's so important, right? So <laughs> reducing stress, it's something that we're all prone to. I think we have more of it around us, uh, clearly, in so many different ways from the world that we live in today with everything that's been happening. But yeah, undone. I never thought of it that way, Michael. And I hope our listeners are thinking about it more now too. Wow, you got me thinking. <laughs> yeah, because we're, we're really good at... Um... Well, I know I am. I mean, I'm, I'm type A. I understand, you know, that, that there's that, um, that sense of responsibility and wanting to get things done and, and also trying to make everybody happy. But in the end, I'm not the happy guy because I, I can't, I have so much on my plate and I know I can't do it and I can put in all the extra hours I want and it's not going to happen. And then what happens is my work starts degrading. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, I'm going to find myself out the door because they say, well, you're not performing that well. Now, if I would have just put up, you know, made a boundary, been honest, and, and we do this, we could do this with our partners, with our yeah. kids. It's just a matter of honesty and honoring yourself and saying, listen, I can only do so much. And this is where I'm at. And, and I'm not pushing back saying I'm not going to do this or I'm not complaining. It's just, I got a lot going on. What do you want me what is your priority? And, I, and I'll, ha I'll be happy to take care of that. And then, and then things work out well. And then you're, you're seen as someone that is willing to cooperate, a team player. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And by the way, 
also uh, some of the things we could do to ease the stress to, you know, lessen how we're feeling is meditation. I know that's something that's important to you that you work with your clients and everyone might think meditation is, you know, sitting and ah, <laughs> but no, let's talk about meditation a little bit, can we? And how we oh, can yeah. work that into our lives. People may say, I don't have time to meditate, but we don't need that much time, right? Especially to get started. Let, let's talk about it. Yeah. So I would say, you know, there's a, there's a saying that I just remembered. So they say that um, you should meditate for 20 minutes a day, but if you're really, really busy, you should meditate for an hour wow. because, because it's like, it, it is really important. And, and there's, um, there's a lot of different places I can go with this. Um, one of the things I would say to somebody that's beginning with meditation uh, and it's not that any of these other um, modes are wrong, or uh, it's just that from my viewpoint, you're better off starting small, maybe 10 to 15 minutes a day, and in silence, no guided meditations. While guided meditations are great, I think the place to start is to become comfortable with silence, with yourself, and to allow your mind over time to slow down on its own. And, and so slowing down your mind is one of the um, one of the things that we're trying to do with meditation. But I hate to say it as like a goal because it's just that you are becoming familiar with yourself and sitting in silence. And then when you get to the point where you can sit in silence for an hour and it and it feels really good, then you can start trying some guided meditations. There's all different types. But I think it's important that you, you get to a point where you find that stillness within, and then you could start using some of the guided meditations. And let me ask you, do you have anything on the website online for us to use? Or how would we start with meditation to work someone into it, you know, that may not be familiar with the process or someone like me, I'd say, well, I, I work full time, I work part time, I have a ki two kids, you know, running yeah. a household. So how does that work? Uh, what would you suggest to someone who is a little bit anxious all the time? <laughs> Meditation, but they may say, well, I don't have the time. Fill us yeah, in. Well, you, we you don't make have it. The, yeah, you don't have the time not to. And, and like I said, you can start small. Uh, I started years ago. And uh, it um, Starting small, and so when you close your eyes, it's important that you either use an eye shade or you close your eyes. You're in a place where you're not going to be disturbed. You can set a timer for 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're going to, and what I always tell people, this is I, what I start a lot of people on is, I want you to notice that you're having thoughts okay. and that thoughts are happening to you. And, and what I want you to notice is that you are not making these thoughts happen. You're sitting there in silence and all of a sudden this thought of somebody that made you mad yesterday comes up or something, something bubbles up and, and, but to take a detached view and, and go and watch it like from the bleachers. I know that sounds weird, but you're watching. I want you, I want people to realize that the thoughts are happening to them based on you know a lot of subconscious factors okay and when you can sit and notice that they're happening um the mind really doesn't care to be watched and over time as you watch your mind doing what it's doing and you're not you're not judging it as wrong and you're not getting involved in the story although you will get involved in the story you know and then you pull yourself back. And so you focus, you have to focus on something, either a benign noise like the refrigerator or air conditioning uh, or your breath. Your breath is a very easy way to focus your, your attention on your breath as it comes in and it goes out. And as you start getting caught up in some of those little stories, you can return your attention. Once, once you notice, return your attention to your breath. And that is your practice. Now, you can do this when you're driving the car, you get to a red light and you can realize your mind is spinning about some goofy stuff. And then you can, you can just think about your breath and say, well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm watching my breath and feel it go into your stomach. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I had to do, which got me over my anxiety was realizing that I was shallow breathing into my chest. And so when you watch a baby breathe, their stomach goes up and down. 
as they yes. breathe. Yeah, you've seen that. And so that is the way to breathe. They don't have, they haven't been conditioned to breathe shallow into their chest. And, and to and suck so, in. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're <laughs> we tend to in. do we're that. Breathing. Yeah, we're breathing here. We're, you know, and then there's a lot of, so we store uh, tension and anxiety in our, in our gut. And so if we can breathe into that, we're actually releasing a lot of stress just by breathing. So wow. it can change your, just breathing can change your life. Wow. And from meditation, do you think it helps us kind of figure out why we're here, what we're doing, what we want as far as life purpose? You want to discuss a little bit about yeah, that, right? Yeah. So, uh, and this topic came up with a, with a friend too, talking about uh, life purpose and looking for purpose and uh, yeah. And, and, and meditation is certainly an instrumental part of that. But what I would say about purpose is that a lot of times we're looking for our purpose or meaning and uh but we're we're like fish that are looking for the water you know because our purpose is a fluid thing right now my purpose is to talk to you mm -hmm. and to express myself best i can tomorrow my purpose may be uh, i volunteer with an organization in in dallas where they build wheelchair ramps for people who can't afford it and so that may be my purpose tomorrow and and maybe my purpose is, is given a, you know, a $50 bill to some guy that's really down on his luck. And maybe that's my purpose in that moment. So it's like a moment to by moment, moment thing mm -hmm. that's unfolding. And so we, we get ourselves into this thought of, I have to have this purpose in life. So I can tell everybody, Hey, this is my purpose. But the problem with that is we're evolving. Yeah. We're like a moving target and, and to, and to, um, to put yourself in a cage of saying, this, this is what I am, this is my purpose, to me seems restrictive because our purpose is evolving. I, I meet people in the park walking my dog all the time and we have these amazing conversations and that's my purpose in that moment. So what is my purpose? I, I don't know. I find out every moment that I live that there's something coming in front of me that is meaningful to somebody. It's meaningful to me. It may be meaningful to somebody else. Got it. Well, that's interesting because life purpose, I mean, we all have a life purpose, but some of us don't even know what it is, right? I believe in the higher, I don't know what it is, but I feel like we all have a, you know, a path, but it also determines, yeah. you know, the journey that gets there. It's our actions, our behaviors, our patterns, but yeah. sometimes it's hard to get to that purpose. And even the purpose that you want in your head, we get blocked with limiting beliefs. Um, and I'm sure is limiting beliefs something you work on with people because it's like, I'm not good enough. I can't have this. I can't. And that type of negativity and doubt talk could really stunt us from getting to our life purpose, to our goal, to our wants. Well, part of our purpose is to overcome those okay. things because it, in, uh, it took me until I was almost 50 years old before I found out that I had this core wound that, was, that said that I'm not smart enough. And it was a very profound moment. It was through a workshop that I did. It was a very profound moment when I, when I actually saw the event that happened when I was like four years old. And I wrote the story. So there was my, my dad was part of this scenario, but my dad never said anything bad to me. I made up my own story about I'm not smart enough. And I carried that with me for almost 50 years. And so, yeah. so that it took me that long to find out that, um, that I even had core wounds and, and how they're affecting what I do. So I would say that our purpose is also overcoming our human condition. Yeah. Wow. All right. That's interesting because I never really looked at it that way. Uh, and you know, you're bringing new light here with enjoy the ride, texas.com. Just to remind everyone who we're talking to, who's listening today, Michael, tell us the best forms of contact for you. Best way to contact me is enjoy the ride, texas.com. Uh, I have all my contact information on there. If you want a free phone consultation, just shoot me a message. We'll set up a time. We'll see if we uh, resonate. Perfect. Uh, we still have some time here, obviously, to talk, Michael. I uh, want to maybe talk about uh, maybe how we can deal with things that bother us um, <laughs> or how we can 
quickly deal with things that bother us. How does that? Okay, so um, things that bother us. So <laughs> this is kind of a universal thing where we're, um, um, things that bother us bother us because we, we think that the world should be different than it actually is. Okay. And, and so, and this goes for other people, this goes for events, uh, this, you know, this goes for what's going on in the world today. We, mm -hmm. we create a lot of, um, we create a lot of stress for ourselves because we believe things need to be different than they are. Okay. And when we look at somebody, let's say we look at somebody else's life and, and by our standards, they're a train wreck. They're, they're in a horrible situation. And so we want to help them. We want to like, Hey, I've been there. I can help you. And then we find out that they don't want our help. And that, and the way I would put it is when you're trying to help someone that is not asking for help, you could be interfering with a divine plan because everybody has to go. Um, everybody has to reach a point where they say, I've had enough of the way that I'm living. I need to change. It's not going to be me telling somebody else. Cause I tried that and it doesn't work. <laughs> it backfires every time. And, but when, but when people get to a point where they say, I'm really tired of living like this, or I feel anxious. And mm -hmm. what did you do? And, yeah. and then they start asking questions, but, like, but it bothers us that we're, um, wow. we're trying to impress what um, we think the world or other people should be um, to make us happy. Got it. That's a good way of thinking of it too. And by the way, I thank you. I know I'm rehydrating. Unfortunately, I'm out of water. So I've been sipping the iced coffee, but I still find that hydrating. <laughs> There's water in there. So it's, it's all good. That's exactly. And all the ice is melted because it's like four hours old. <laughs> so it does count. <laughs> now, do you want to talk a little bit? Uh, we have five minutes left, maybe a little bit about the most important relationship in our lives. Yeah. So the most important relationship is the one we have with ourselves. Okay. And in all the work that I do, I'm always turning people back around to say, what is it about you? And what is it, what is it that you feel? Um, like I'm working with a woman right now that's, that's quitting smoking. Okay. And it started as she just wants to quit smoking. And, and what it really evolved into is finding out why she started in the first place and and, and finding out that it was a traumatic event that caused the start of it. So then what is happening now is that now she has to re-engage with those emotions that were so painful in the, at the time. And right now she has to live through those, mm -hmm. that painful time because, and, and then I tell her every time you pick up a cigarette and you're going to smoke it, I want you to pay attention to where you, what do you feel and where do you feel it in your body? Because, and then follow that, follow that. And then if you feel like crying, cry. I mean, let it out. It's like little kids know this intuitively when they're really upset about something, they cry and cry and cry until they fall asleep because they're experiencing their pain fully. They're just, they're, they're not, um, they're not holding it in or pressing it down. They're just like, Wow. <laughs> and they yeah. just let it come out and then it comes out. And when they wake up, they're like, oh, I feel pretty good right now. And, and so, you know, we can learn a lot from our kids from yeah. the way that they intuitively deal with life. Mm -hmm. And Michael, someone here is tuning in now listening, uh, enjoy the ride, Texas. Um, you know, what is it about you that you say would make you so unique as a coach, as someone who's going to guide them, help them along, you know, what else would you like to share? We just have three minutes left in the show. So I want to make sure we get to that. Okay, so, um, you know, the uniqueness is that um, th the things that I can help people with are things that I've actually lived through. And, uh, and what I really found at the end of the day is that it, it, it really is a spiritual journey. And, you know, some people are, are willing to go there. Other people are like, no, I don't, I don't need that kind of thing. Um, but I've lived this stuff and I, and I can talk from the experience that I have. So, I'm not coming to somebody saying, well, I, you know, I, I can come to somebody saying, I know what you've been through. I, I know what this dark 
moment you're going through right now feels like, and I can walk you through it because I've been there. Got it. All right. Well, thank you for that. You've walked the walk. You can empathize. It's super important to know that uh, we've all had our struggles. We've all had our share of issues. And the fact that you can help people guide them and walk their hand is important. Michael, if someone's looking to reach out to you, how does it work as far as the initial consultation and call? And how do you normally work with your clients? Would you mind just sharing a little bit? Sure. So they can reach out to me at enjoytheridetexas.com. Uh, they can find the, <clears throat> my contact information within the website. They can reach out to me. We can do a free phone consultation and have a discussion. And we can talk about uh, how, how I work and kind of manage their expectations so to see if they really resonate with me and, and with this work, because, you know, it's really important that you feel a connection with whoever, whoever you're going to work with and whatever you're dealing with. Got uh, it. So I would encourage everybody to, you know, hey, reach out. Let's have a short little discussion and let's figure it out. And either it's going to work or it's not. And it's, it's all good either way. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. So enjoy the ride, Texas. And what about uh, social media? Can we find you there? You want to give out your number as well? So I, I am on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I'm starting to get a little presence on, on Instagram and, Perfect. Um, and, and I have a site on Facebook as well. Um, I mean, you can reach me at 815-342-6478 and just shoot me a text and we'll set up a time to, to chat. Perfect. Michael Pajanowski, thank you again for your time, for being here. Uh, looking forward to the next time we speak. Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners and viewers today, we appreciate it. Stay tuned. More of the show is on the way. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.